Welcome back to Photoshop for Photographers. And today we're going to take a look at the crop tool. So the crop tool is located over here. And if you've ever wondered what the little crop tool is, it's actually an item that used to be used a lot called a scaleograph. This is the new crop tool in 2020. It has these like white little bars on it. So if you don't see these like white little lines and you have an older version of Photoshop, that would be the reason why this is something new that they added into Photoshop. So we have brought up the crop tool. And the first place that we're going to take a look is this navigation bar up here. The first thing that you have here inside of the crop tool is this little crop tool and it has a drop down menu. And if you click on one of these, it's automatically going to fill this information out and give you some predetermined crops as well as the fact that you can add to them. But what we're going to do right now is kind of go back to where we were in ratio. So I think this is the easiest place to start and we'll come back to that. If you do see something that's pre-filled out, we'll get back to it. The first thing is ratio. So let's click off this and click back on. When you initially use the crop tool and you just have ratio, it is going to use the ratio that your image size is. Now, if you're shooting 35 millimeter, most likely that's going to be a two by three ratio. When you crop, it's going to allow you to change that ratio to anything that you want to do under its basic default. You will see here there's no information filled out. That's going to allow you to basically freeform and crop this however you would like. The next thing, if you hold down to the shift key in this mode, it's going to keep that ratio that you initially had. So you'll see as I'm pulling down, I can only crop in the ratio. And when I crop, it is because I grab that top right hand bar as I crop down, it's moving everything in that direction. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the alt option key and crop. And you'll see when you hold the alt option key, it's allowing you to change the ratio, but it's moving everything in equally. If you hold the shift and the alt option key, it's going to keep the ratio, but move all sides in equally. There is no right or wrong way to do this. It really just depends on the image and what you want to do. But those are all important aspects of the crop tool. The next thing that we have here under ratio, we're going to skip this one, but we're going to come down here to ratios. So if I change this to a one by one ratio, it is not resizing the image. It's not going to make this one inch by one inch. It is going to crop it to that specific ratio. We're still going to have the full information, but the ratio is going to be one by one. So when I come in here and try to move this, it's always going to make that perfectly square. If I go ahead and crop this image, it's going to crop it, but it's not going to resize it. So if we come up here and we look at image size, you can see it's not one inch by one inch. It's just cropped it perfectly square. And we're going to undo that. Next thing that we have is a four by five or the eight by 10 ratio. So we have four by five and eight by 10. Right now, this is in a portrait mode. If you want to flip that, there's two different ways to do that. You can come up here to these little arrows and click them and it will flip it to make it portrait or landscape. Or you kind of pull an edge. So what I mean by pull an edge is so normally when you're cropping in on a ratio, it's going to move that way. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this mouse when I'm dragging it and I'm going to pull it this direction. So instead of going this direction, I'm going to go this direction and it's going to force this to flip. So pulled it that way and I forced it to flip to portrait mode. And if I pull this direction, it's going to make it landscape mode. Two options to do that. It doesn't really matter which one you use. Usually I would just pick one of those and go ahead with it. So under that, we have a five by seven, a two by three and a 16 by nine default crop setting. 
Those are your ratios that are preset inside of Photoshop. Now remember, they are not sizing your image, they are only cropping to a specific ratio. Most of the time in Photoshop, I am using a ratio, not a size. Why? Because I wanna keep the full image data in my image and save it, and then if I need to output to a specific smaller size, I'll save it later. And we will come across that, and I will talk more about it in future videos. So let's keep going. So the next thing that we have is four by five at 300 pixels per inch. This, however, is changing the ratio, but it also is sizing your image. So whenever you have just a four inch and a five inch, that's just a ratio. But when you add this little number right here, 300 pixels per inch, it is sizing your image as well. So there's a big difference between cropping to a ratio and cropping to a size. So if I wanted to crop this image at four by five at 300 pixels per inch, I'm gonna hit crop. You can see it has reduced the size of my image. Now, if I go up into image size, we're gonna see, and I switch over to inches, it's actually four by five at 300 pixels per inch. So this image has been sized not just a ratio. So you need to understand the difference between cropping to a ratio and cropping to a specific size. We're gonna undo that. Let me zoom back out. And under here, we have a variety of different sizes that we could crop to. Some of these I've just made and used on my own, and some of them are gonna be in there by default. And if you wanted to add a new crop preset, it's really easy. So we'll do one that hasn't been done before. I will just make this five inches by five inches at 300 pixels per inch. I could come in here and put new crop preset, and then it's gonna automatically do five by five at 300, and I would hit okay, and it would save that. I'm not gonna save it because I don't actually want that preset. So it's easy to save a preset of any sort inside of Adobe Photoshop. So if it's something odd that you use a lot, go ahead, feel free to add your own preset. We're just gonna go back up to ratio. And I'm gonna hit clear. So if you wanna clear the ratio, you're gonna hit clear. Then it's gonna allow you to kind of use that old one or you can just kind of click on and click off and it will automatically reset full frame to the image. The last one is kind of a manual version of cropping to a specific size. You're gonna to go to width, height, and resolution. And so you can see it's using the last one that I had. It's five and you need to put inches. If you do IN, that's inches, CM, that's centimeters, PX, that is pixels. So depending on what you wanna do or to size an image, you're gonna either use inches or centimeters. And then this resolution down here is pixels per inch. And so 300 is a pretty standard pixels per inch to print. The next thing we're gonna take a look at is down here, something called delete cropped pixels. So usually in Photoshop, I do not have delete crop pixels on when I'm cropping and I will show you why. So if you have delete crop pixels and you crop your image, and then you go back to your image, that image data has been deleted and you can't get it back. Now, if you uncheck delete crop pixels and then crop your image, and then you go back into crop, you'll see your data is still there. So it cropped the image, but it did not delete the image data. So if you did need to go back and recrop this image to a different size, you're gonna have that information available. I would say that most of the time, you should not have delete crop pixels checked unless you really do want it gone. Now let's say that we have this image here, and I will make it a little bit bigger, that we like this, but for some reason, and I don't know what the reason would be, we want needed to crop this square, but we needed a little more information above the image where there's no data, it doesn't exist. And so you see that's being displayed by transparency. Photoshop can actually use content-aware fill to fill in information there. 
It doesn't always do it perfectly, but a lot of times, depending on the simplicity of your edge, it does a pretty good job. If you needed to extend an image outside of the data, you're gonna click content aware. And then when you hit return, and just so you know, you could click this check mark, you can double click inside the box, or I usually just hit return on my keyboard, it will apply that crop to it. Not sure why I did that weird thing. So you can see it tried to fill that in, but, but for some reason it's picking up these people and it didn't use the correct information. So we'll come back into this and I'll try this again. We'll just try to extend this down here and see if it does a better job. And it filled in that data, but once again, it did not do a good job. Now you can manually use content aware fill, which is much better. I guarantee you that if you use content aware fill, which is located over here, and I will be going over this, it's this one right here that you're not able to use at this moment. But that's how you create an area. And most of the time content aware fill actually works pretty good. It just doesn't work where something is complicated like this, or you have a bunch of lines. We're gonna switch over to this image of this skyline here, and I'm gonna clear this. All right, so I've got this image of this building, and I'm gonna show you how to use the next tool inside of this image. So right here, we have this level, and next to it, it's called straighten. So what this is gonna allow me to do is to straighten or level an edge. So we can see this building's a little bit tilted. This side is lower than this side. So if I go ahead and click this, and then I grab a point, so I'm gonna go right here on this point, I'm gonna click hold, click hold, and drag, and then put another point over here. And once I do this, I'm just gonna let go with my mouse, and Photoshop is automatically gonna rotate this building and make this line perfectly level. So let's do that again. We're gonna click on the level, we're going to click and hold, drag, and let go. And it's automatically gonna rotate that building and now this line is perfectly level. Now you can do that manually. So when you're in the crop tool, if you go outside of the crop box, you'll know you'll get this little radius arrow. And if you click and hold, click and hold, and then drag this way, the image is gonna rotate that way, and drag this way, it's gonna rotate that way. So you are able to manually rotate an image if you like, or you can try to just go ahead and use the level. So I think that looks pretty good. I can try to apply that, and now this is much straighter than it used to be. The next thing that we have here is this grid, and so this grid will show up. I'm gonna click inside this image, and we are getting rule of thirds, which is this line, and if you come up in here, you'll notice rule of thirds is selected. But if I want the grid, I can select it to a grid, which would be good for architecture. You can do diagonal or any one of these other things that you see selected here. Now, I just basically use rule of thirds. It's not something that I care about much. Next thing that we have down here is to set additional crop options. It's not something that I ever use. Right here, this is to undo or reset what you've done in the crop. This is to delete and this is to apply. So depending on how you wanna do something. So if I crop this image, I can come up here and click this and it will apply it. I can also grab that crop button and do something and I can double click inside, it will apply it. Or I can come in here, crop something, and hit my return button or the enter button and it will apply it. Three different ways to apply and do the exact same. That is how you use the crop tool inside of Adobe Photoshop. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>